Amen. Take your Bibles and turn over to John's Gospel, chapter 7. Today we're going to talk about living by God's timetable. When my children were young, I used to stress to them, and as they were growing up, the importance of timing in life. Timing in life is so important. And God has a timetable for each of us. And we need to learn to walk according to that timetable. For instance, the writer of Ecclesiastes says that God has a time for everything. He says there is an appointed time for everything. And there's a time for every event under heaven. And then he goes on to mention many different events. A time to give birth. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up is lost. A time to keep, a time to throw away. A time to tear apart, a time to sew together. A time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. He tells us that God has a timetable for all events under the sun. And that we need to understand God's timetable and follow it in our lives. The right thing, done in the wrong time, becomes the wrong thing. Also, it is important that our words be at the right time. Proverbs 15 says, A man has joy in an apt answer. How delightful is a timely word. A word that might be the right word, but spoken at the wrong time, becomes the wrong word. I remember this came home to me when I was in seminary. I was working as a chaplain uh, during the summer, and I was at uh, part of that chaplaincy training is that we had to work the emergency room at the University of Louisville Medical School Hospital there in Louisville, Kentucky. That was their answer to Grady. And you know, everything that happens in an emergency situation, accidents in Atlanta, great is the first choice. Well, that was the case with this hospital. And we had to work a Friday night shift and a Saturday night shift. And I remember we had this fellow was brought in by the ambulance and he had this cut on his ear that he had been standing on the street corner and he had been leaning over looking and this truck came by and the rear view mirror of the truck hit his ear and cut it. Well, it was my responsibility as a chaplain to notify his mother that he was there in the emergency room. And so I was thought, okay, now I need to say, uh, is this so-and-so, and are you the mother of so-and-so? And Okay, I got that in my mind, so I called her up and I said, is this so-and-so? She said, yes. I said, do you have a son named so-and-so? She said, yes. I said, well, I'm a chaplain here at the university hospital, and I just want to call and let you know your son's been hit in the head by a car. And once those words came out, I realized what they sounded like. I said, no, 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 he's all right. No, he's all right. He's fine. Now, if I'd waited until she, I'd, if I'd just said, look, your son's in the hospital. He's doing fine, but he needs you to come down to see him in the emergency room. And then she'd gotten down to the emergency room and seen how he was okay. And then I'd said, look, he's been hit in the head by a truck. That would have been all right. The timing would have been fine. Because he was hit in the head with a truck, but... I can imagine what she must have been thinking when I said he's down here and he's been hit in the head with a truck. You could just imagine his head rolling down the road or something. But So the right thing said at the wrong time becomes the wrong thing. Now, if you've been married for any time at all, you know that. There's a time to shut up, right? A time to be silent, men. And if you hadn't learned that, you better learn it. And there's a time to speak. All of us must realize that God has a timetable 
And we must learn to live by that timetable. When we're going to get married. When we're going to go to college. When we're going to have children. God's time for us leaving one job and going to another job. God has a timetable. And we need to learn how to live according to that. Now today in our text, we're going to see Jesus and his determination to live by God's timetable for his life. You see, God had a timetable for Jesus' birth. You remember in Galatians 4, it says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. So in the fullness of time, God had a particular time picked out from eternity past that would be the very day that Jesus would be born. And we've seen in our previous times in Galatians 4 how everything in a global scene has, was coming together just right for the time of the birth of Jesus. Not only that, but God also had a time for Jesus to die. In John 12, Jesus, thinking toward his death, said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus said the hour of his death was approaching. And just as God had a time for Jesus to be born and a time for Jesus to die, he had a timetable throughout the life of Jesus. And Jesus was determined to follow that timetable. And today in our passage, we will clearly see Jesus' determination to live by God's timetable. Now, as we look at our passage, and if you would stand in respect for God's word, I want you to see if you can notice John's hints that Jesus is walking according to God's timetable. Beginning in verse 1, chapter 7 of John. After these things, Jesus was walking in Galilee. For he was unwilling to walk in Judea, because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the feast of the Jews, the feast of booths, was near. Therefore his, his brothers said to him, Leave here, go into Judea, so that your disciples also may see your works which you are doing. For no one does anything in secret when he himself seeks to be known publicly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world." For not even his brothers were believing in him. So Jesus said to them, My time is not yet here, but your time is always opportune. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, and its deeds are evil. 